Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com here to do a couple, a couple of hodgepodge, another sort of video blogs, Monday, February 27th, the last Monday in February. So first things first, I did get, I've got other stuff expected in the mail, hopefully relatively soon, I'm not sure when though. Uh, Mask the Phantasm uh, and Toe Hider also and the Warning Vinyl, but um, for now, I got the uh, Kevin Gilbert uh, State KMG Archive Series 3 and 4, which might be the last ones. The Caviar, Demos, Outtakes, Alternate Mixes, and the Thud Acoustic. And I've listened to them both once today. Ripped them to my, my laptop and everything. You can see the inner part of it. It's, there's a lot of notes. It's kind of one of the most interesting things about it. On the Caviar, Demos, Outtakes, and Alternate Mixes... Um, and all right just first impressions you know these are collector's items these aren't going to be releases i'm going to listen to regularly especially considering my um lack more lack of 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 interest or appreciation for caviar as much as i know a lot of kevin gilbert fans love caviar it's one of the their most favorite things that kevin did um but I will say, just listening to this, some of this stuff, I'm kind of enjoying it in a way a little more than the original. Or Although, in some ways, it's kind of making me appreciate the originals. But the first Indian Burn cartoon mix is cool in a way. It's almost like it's like Mighty Mighty Boston. It's like there's a horn section on it. The vocals are fairly distorted, and it's a different um, fidelity on and style approach to the vocals. I mean, there's a lot of weird vocals on Caviar, of course, because Kevin has a reading from, I think it was Brian McLeod or one of the other people wrote something about it last week or the week before about how Kevin didn't want, he didn't want the vocals on Caviar to sound like his normal voice. He, wanted to, he didn't want it to be recognizable, which makes sense. So, um... Yeah, I mean, there's some other thing. The Brian McLeod demo of Broken is, it's like something, it's, it's just like a little ditty acoustic, um, almost like a kid song in a way. It doesn't, re it doesn't resemble the, the, I mean, yeah, the lyrics are a little bit like that and it's Brian McLeod singing, I believe. Um, but it's, it's, it's definitely a lot different. Um. You know, the two picnics, different, um. Yeah, there's there's a lot of differences. Madonna's fart is a novelty, although that's sort of weird saying anything on caviar is a novelty. But even for for caviar, it's kind of a novelty. It's, um, it kind of lives up. It's it, it's in the same vein, but I could sort of see why it wasn't originally on the caviar sessions release. It's just yeah, it's a lot of. I mean, it's you're talking about beans and you know. Um, flatulence, of course, and there, there's some, there's some less than desirable lyrics in it, but that's, you know, the whole caviar, you know, um, motif is sort of less uncomfortable lyrics in a lot of ways. Um, the Spando vocal of Strong Enough, you know, the Strong Enough's the song off of, um, Tuesday, Tuesday Night Music Club's Cheryl Crow's album is actually really catchy. It's sort of not just a like a like a club version of that song it's actually almost a pop hybrid i could see that even being i mean the other version i still i can't remember was it, Fra was it frankie goes to hollywood i forget who um anyway it, it's a novelty i mean but it, again i for people that love caviar a lot more than me this is a must-have oh yeah um among other things on here the uh, what is it the picnic i think it's picnic Maybe Indian Indian Burn. They're using samples. I think it was the first one. Yeah, the cartoon. That's not the second. Maybe it was the second one. They're using samples from the Lone Ranger. And there's a note in here in the write-up that says, "Don't use Tonto. It cheapens the song." So they must have. They had a sample from the TV, the old TV series from the 50s or whatever, 40s, 50s, uh, of. Um, of the Rolling Ranger, and they had Tonto on there, and then, you know, because you could hear the voice, they talked to the masked man, stuff like that, so, um, 
There's other stuff on these notes that's just interesting. Cup of Love, I'm like really kind of thrown off by that. And there's other things. White Noise, Hard Life, Feel Good. Some of these notes from Kevin are Judy Satan. Anyway, so moving on to Thud Acoustic. I mean, I don't know if I'll talk more about this at some point. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, Thud Acoustic. Um, and I was a little concerned that this was going to be very much of stuff that I've heard. Like, if, if it's not exact versions, like, similar versions or that are from the 20th anniversary book version of Thud or live. And the li I think some of them resemble almost some of the live, like, when Nick and, and Kevin, the, some of that those recordings. But um, there's enough on here that I'm really happy they released it, I guess. Um, um, I mean, the, the arrangements are still relatively similar to at least something I've heard before, if not... The versions on Thud um, or on the on that, but um, I mean, you know, there's the drums on "When You Give Your Love to Me" sound different. The I don't know, it's the snare, or whatever they're using. I mean, this is acoustic drums. Um, there's a few things on here that I I slightly appreciate. There, even some of the lyrics are just a, a hair different. Just the way he, his vocal delivery, Kevin, on a few of these tracks. But um, I guess you know, it's it's something for the Kevin. Kevin Gilbert fan for sure who loves Thud, so they give a little thing there. So anyway, that's you know, I, I mean these are this these are simplistic releases from the estate um, before they're done releasing everything physical. I, I imagine there's going to be large, potentially large uh, versions, collections of digital tracks that will be made available on Kevin's site. Uh, and or maybe streaming YouTube, Spotify, who knows that they have, we haven't heard. So, um, all right. So let's see here. The um, party down premiere came out on Friday. I did watch that, and big thumbs up. Despite the absence of Lizzie Kaplan, although they did have um her in there in a way saying that she joined SNL and stuff like that. But, um, it's going to be six episodes. So I'm not going to do like a episode to episode review, um, of, of this. I'm not going to, like some people do. It's one week, one episode a week. I'll just, I'm talking about it initially. And, um, it was kind of long. It was like 30 minutes too, but, um, they had some good cameos in it. James Marsden, um, the guy from Dollhouse, Chaz something, Chaz Chan, Chaz something, that also was in Welcome to the Captain. He's done a lot of other stuff. He was good to see. I, I He's been doing other work, but I haven't seen him um, in a, a long time. And um, he, he played a character who was like Ryan Hansen. Um, what's his name? Chaz? Oh, no. Nah, of course, I can't find it. I thought his name was Chaz. Chaz or Chad? Well, okay. <laughs> I swear I looked him up just this weekend and, um. He was. Fran. No, not Chaz. Can't Fran Kranz. Well, just A in the word. <laughs> a in the second letter. Fran Kranz. Yeah, that dude. He he was in Welcome to the Cabin and Dollhouse and like he he was he was a good cameo. Um, who was they? They had a few other. They had um, the girl from Abbott Elementary who just was on the SAG Awards last last night. Who I can't even remember her name either. She was on BuzzFeed before she ever did that though, which is weird. She's like every. She's like in everything right now. She's like a writer on it too. Quinta Brunson. Yeah, she I and she's supposedly playing Ryan Hansen's agent, but he's like she's the agent of someone else, so I don't know if it's a one off. Um else do they have in there? I'm trying to remember the other cameos, but um yeah, we'll see, you know, I'm, I'll maybe do a wrap up at the end of the season at the end of March. Um and then I watched a movie that looked good based on the trailers, my initial comments were good and then it just gotten destroyed. Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill. Uh, it's called You People. And it has... Her name is London. Something... Landon? Landon, London? No. 
London, something black actress who's been in a lot of stuff actually that I've either know of or seen. Um, but it just it I get it was a romantic Lauren London. It's a romantic comedy. The thing is, it's be kind of crossing paths with be two people. One coming from a Jewish background, and the other coming from a obviously a African American or black background. Um, some of it, Julia Louise Dreyfus, yeah, she just, um, I, I can't, she's very hit and miss for me. I've liked some things she's done. I didn't mind her on Seinfeld for the most part, although I wasn't a huge Seinfeld fan. I didn't care for that Christine show she was in. I've never seen Veep, well, people love it, but, oh, she was so effectively annoying <laughs> as the Jewish mother. That's the thing is the initial scene I saw on Netflix when I was like going to watch the other stuff like the the two documentary series that thing came up I'm like you know and I'd see a trailer for it, I was like this looks good it's like they're they're capturing this whole Jewish family the the, the sort of rebellious son um yeah it kind of was over the top in some of the stereotyping the naivety um the thing one thing I didn't understand is Jonah Hill has a friend his best friend is this. This I believe she's like a gay black woman, but you know they never really confirmed that entirely. But why didn't she bond or kind of screen this woman that he met? Um, what's her name? Her name is Amira. I, they did that. They, that wasn't in the script, but um, yeah, it got kind of it got. I th I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, could it win a Razzie? Maybe I don't. Know. You have you have all these people. It's written by Kenya Barris, who did Blackish. You have Anthony. Anderson, who had a cameo, and there were a couple other cameos in it, but I mean, the Blackish kind of. Kenya Barris has done a lot of stuff outside of Blackish that's like connected to Blackish. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I guess I thought it was worth seeing. There were enough. There were enough jokes in there that worked. I, Jonah Hill is also like, like Julie Louis Reifus is hit and miss for me. Um, I never bothered with the 21. 22 movies um but i did like him in moneyball um the apatel stuff some of those movies i uh, can take or leave he's a better support player but this was more of a this was a you know romantic comedy and i thought he was okay i thought he he was fine he you know um so i don't know it was i guess i think it, people are being a little harsh on it but i can sort of you know, I initially thought it was going to be better than it was. So, I mean, I, star ratings, I gave it two and a half stars. And if that means much, maybe that's being way too generous. But anyway, I guess I would say if you are a Jonah Hill or Eddie Murphy fan, or you like Lauren London. Oh, you had David Duchovny also, who was the, the father. Of, that that was a little weird. You have, you're casting Julie Louis Dreyfus and um, David Duchovny as Jonah Hill's parents and don't look like either of either one of them really but um i think if you're fans of those actors or you're a blackish fan kenya barris fan you should you could give it a look but i would not have huge expectations for it because expect some kind of less than ideal dialogue from the parents especially um but you know some of the pop culture references are pretty decent i i admit you know i'm not even the music they were talking about it like left and right, you know, and the basketball, you know, the basketball culture, you know, the hip hop stuff, you know, not necessarily might be a lot of it, but um, anyway, so I did watch that over the weekend. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, the Deer Hunter, the Deer Hunter graphic novel series. So the Axe series were were in the process and are still, I guess, technically in the process of being published as a graphic novel form. I have some of them in the other room. I don't think these are, though. No, I think they're in the other room. I think I've shown them, though. But um, there's Act 1, and then there's the first part, at least, of Act 2. But Act 2 and the whole story definitely would require many volumes, unless it was really big. Oh, that's the other thing I did get. But, um, in fact, I'm going to stop here. <laughs> All right, so the hell? I don't know. This isn't it either. Well, there's this one, Act One. Oops, wait. I don't remember what that was from. 
Yeah, the COVID stuff. I'm like 99.9% .9 certain. See, I have my Coheed in Cambria, but this is Act 1, which came out, I don't know, it was like 20, 2017, 2018, 2016. And then Act, Act 2, there was part of Act 2 that came out. You know, you can see that. It's so dark here, but um, the Deer Hunter Act 2. My, I've never read the, I, this wouldn't take that long to read. I have the Amory Wars, but this is a score or something. This is not, yeah. This was had to do with, um, what is it, what should not, what, what is, I think, anyway. Anyway, the Deer Hunter, the second part of Act 2 of these series is going to be coming out. Um, I don't know when, but there was a post on Friday, I think it was. Yeah. It's like super dark, of course, but it doesn't come out. Recording. Yeah, here's my Coheed and Cambria Good Apollo. And after like listening to the lyrics a few weeks ago, like a few months ago when I was listening, like when I was doing the 2005 list, I can't imagine how dark some of this stuff is, but I remember buying this, I think it was at the show I saw them with the Deer Hunter. Yeah, my, my book here, my Act 4 score book. But, so, um, I'm damn close to finishing this book finally, and then I can move on to probably the Stephen Wilson book, but separated out the Marillion, which only goes through like 2012. This is the Redux version, so it's obviously missing like a decade of storytelling history and anecdotes and stuff like that, but I'll do, I'll do a full, as as a detailed or as, as short as possible overview of it pretty soon, probably in the next, I was almost going to finish it this weekend, probably in the next week, maybe in the, even this week, but went to Barnes & Noble yesterday, the wife wanted to get, uh, there's a monkey's, like a gold mine has an issue, they include the thing on Kansas and Uriah Heap, but also Mickey Dolan's and the monkeys doing headquarters and stuff like that, so we picked that up and I, you know, been seeing a lot of Brian K. Vaughn's like special deluxe re remastered, not remastered, but republished and update updated or just higher quality but more expensive and fuller volume versions of some of his stuff. Like Why the Last Man, um, Ex Machina, I don't know, Saga's too in there. And what am I thinking of? There's one other one, but. Paper Girls is the one that I, uh, over the last year, like last nine months especially, since the TV series came out, and I got a couple issues, I only read the first, and I only had, I, didn't have, I have not read, and then the TV series, liking the TV series, and then the TV series got canceled, made me really want to read this more, so I've been looking for it, and th this is the whole thing. I had it at Barnes & Noble, and the price wasn't outlandish, I mean, you know, inflation, stuff like that, but... It's 50 bucks, and I'm like, just screw it. Even though I'm budget, budget is tight right now, and I bought that warning vinyl, the warning vinyl, and some other stuff. But so, I, with all these other books I'm trying to read, I'm not sure when I'll end up getting getting to this. Hopefully soon, though. So probably say in the next six months or less, because um, this is the full thing, the whole story. So um, he's still doing Saga. Um, he's doing a lot of other stuff through his email list. A lot of kind of out there stuff, of course, that's Brian K. Vaughn, but I, I'm really happy to have this. I mean, I need I need to get the versions of Why the Last Man, Ex Machina, probably, too, in a, a better, you know, more... better condition. I bought mine used at Half Price Books and everything, like, um, so they weren't even perfect. I, I checked them out from the library, the Ex Machinas and Why the Last Man originally, so... Uh, but yeah, that's what came up. So I got other stuff going on this week. The Marillion list, I was talking about the book. I, reading this book especially, I want to do the Marillion song list. So between that and the Dream, the Dream Theater one's probably going to come first because I'm almost done setting that thing up. But, um, and the 1993. So, but I don't know, that could be a few weeks down the road. Um, there's also um, a channel I'm going to do like a... a channel called the world's a stage is doing a thing and i know the deadline's like in a week to win an amazon gift card and for his subs total and everything like that so anyway thank you for watching please subscribe if you have to subscribe and we'll see you next time